Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the third problem from the leak code contest number 138, which is entitled previous permutation with one swap. The problem states, given an array A of positive integers, not necessarily distinct, return the lexicographically largest permutation that is smaller than A, that can be made with one swap. A swap exchanges the positions of two numbers AI and AJ. If it cannot be done, then return the same array, or the original array. And the constraints for this problem are that the length of the array is going to be between 1 and 10,000, and the values in the array are going to be between 1 and 10,000 as well. So if you want to think about how to solve this problem and you haven't looked at it already, pause the video because I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. I'm going to walk you through how I actually approach this problem and uh, we're going to go from there. So I'm going to jump straight into the solution that I thought uh, was going to be able to solve this problem, which is the following. So there's an algorithm in the STL algorithm library called prev permutation, which basically returns you the previous permutation. I didn't really read the problem statement and just sort of read the title and thought this would be the solution. So just call previous permutation on our array A and then return A. Uh, and if we now go to the examples, we'll see that this doesn't work. So we're given four examples for this problem. For the first one, it actually works. So we're given the array 3, 2, 1, and the previous permutation with one swap, swapping 1 and 2, gives a 3, 1, 2. So my algorithm worked for the first example. Uh, for the second example, however, it doesn't. So this is one of the corner cases where um, it's sorted already. So we can't do a pre uh, permutation to get a sort of lexicographically smaller. For those of you that don't know, lexicographically just means sort of the uh, way that you might find these in a dictionary if it were sorted. So if you were to create every single permutation and sort them uh, by comparing character to character, uh, that's what lexicographically means. Um, so if we were to do this with my algorithm or the previous permutation algorithm, you would get this. So basically it wraps around to the largest array that you can get. And this obviously is incorrect when we compare it. So I then went back to my code and said, well, this is simple to fix. We just need to add a little if statement at the top and says, if it's not sorted, uh, to take care of that corner case, then call previous permutation. However, this is also wrong. So if we go back and check our third example, um, we can see we're given the input 19467, and the result should be 17469, so swapping the 7 and the 9. However, the previous permutation algorithm will return you 17964, um, which if you uh, you know look at closely, you'll see when we compare it to 19467, the original, it switches the 7, the 9, the 6, and the 4, which is definitely more than one swap. Uh, so I didn't really pay attention to that part of the problem statement either. So this is you can't solve this problem using the previous permutation algorithm. It is somewhat similar to that algorithm, but there's this extra clause that we're only allowed to uh, perform one swap. So we have to scrap that idea. So how are we going to actually solve this problem then? So after looking at a couple examples and submitting a couple solutions, you can find the following pattern. So if we take a closer look at this array A for the example number three, we'll see that this is what it looks like visually. And we end up swapping uh, the nine, which is the tallest column, and then the seven, which is the last column. And after looking at a couple examples, what you'll find is basically that you want to identify the first number starting from the back of the array that is not in descending order. Uh, which is the 9 here. And then we want to find within the uh, elements to the right of that element that you identified, the largest element that is less than this element. So originally I thought, OK, you just need to go from the right, find the first element that uh, isn't in descending order, and then swap that with the last one. But the problem is, is that if you have a value at the beginning here that's actually larger than this value, swapping it isn't going to give you a lexicographically smaller array. You'll get a different array, but it's going to end up being bigger. So for example, if we add a 10 to the end, we don't want to swap the 10 and the 9. We want to swap the 9 and the 7, uh, which is basically the first element that is less than uh, the 9 here. So if we take a look at how to implement this algorithm, we'll end up with the following in C++. So, uh, once again, sort of deal with our corner case. Um, if it's sorted, just return the original array. Uh, then we make a call to is sorted until, 
um, and we pass it reverse iterators because we're starting from the end and then we also want to pass it the greater than uh, binary operation or comparator so that uh, we know that we're looking for basically uh, this array sorted in descending order um, until that element that uh, breaks that pattern and so now we have an iterator pointing to that element and then basically we want to make a call to find if to find the first element that is uh, less than the value at i. So we have a lambda here that's basically checking is the current element that we're looking at less than the value that is at uh, the uh, position that the iterator i is pointing to. And note that we're also using reverse iterators here because we're starting from the back of the array. And once we have both i and j, we just swap those and return it. And this, during the contest, got a pass. Uh, so it was identified as a correct solution. However, there was a lot of discourse on the forum afterwards um, basically saying that this was not uh, correct. So even though I got full points for this during the contest, it is not a fully correct algorithm and they were missing some corner cases. Um, so it was you know correct for the contest but actually incorrect and that's because and it was even in their example cases which was confusing that they sort of missed this so they have the input 3113 and my algorithm basically would identify 3 as the first element that breaks the decreasing and then uh, this, the second last element which is the one here and then swap those and that would give you 1133 uh, but if you compare that to 1313 that's lexicographically smaller so it's not the previous permutation with one swap so um, the algorithm that I just showed gives you 1133 but really we want to find 1313 um, so the modification that we need to make to the algorithm that we just saw was that we actually don't want the first element that's less than uh, our value that we found um, by doing our uh, is sorted until we want to find the first element uh, that has a value that's less than but then the furthest left if there are multiple elements with the same value so instead of finding the first one we want to find the second one um, so it's still the same algorithm with just a slight modification to it. So if we go back to our code, um, basically all we're doing here is we are now making a call to equal range, which is another algorithm that we can use basically to find um, the iterator pointing to the beginning of a range of equal values and uh, the iterator pointing to the end of the range of equal values and then uh, we can store this in a pair here and then we can just use p dot first so instead of swapping i and j we're swapping i and uh, the first element in our pair returned to us by equal range um, so this gets a complete solution and a pass and actually if you go back and try the last solution that I just showed it fails after the contest so during the contest it passed but after the contest now if you submit it it will fail so this is great um, but there are a couple improvements that we can make to the code that's currently on the screen um, so the first one is that we are making a call to is sorted and then making a call to is sorted until which are basically um, is sorted can be implemented in terms of is sorted until and then we'll also note that at the end of uh, this if statement we're returning a and then at the end we're also returning a so there's definitely some duplication here that can be avoided if we do the following so instead of making our first call to is sorted we are just making a single call to is sorted until and then in replacement of our is sorted we're checking if the uh, iterator i is pointing to the uh, pass the last element of the reverse iterator on A and this does the trick um, and there's one final improvement that we can make to this algorithm which is actually very disappointing that I didn't initially write this and it's the following we can basically upgrade our find if to a modified lower bound due to the fact that uh, this find if is operating on a range that we know is going to be sorted uh, in descending order and this actually is mentioned in Sean Parent's C++ seasoning talk explicitly that's a find if. Maybe you might think implies that this stuff is sorted. Well, if you read the actual function, you would find that yes, in fact, everything except for the item we're looking for is in sorted order. And now we can replace the find if with a lower bound, and we can do a binary search for that guy. 
So very disappointing that I didn't see that initially, but uh, the point stands that we can definitely do the same thing here, upgrade our find if, which is going to be a linear time operation to a binary search in the form of a lower bound or a modified lower bound, which is going to be a log n operation. So here is our call to lower bound. It's being wrapped by a function called first less than, which some of you might be familiar with if you've seen uh, the explanation video on binary search lower bound and upper bound. I'll link that in the description down below if you haven't seen it. Um, but basically lower bound gives us the first greater than or equal to uh, iterator or element, um, whereas this version of it will give us the first less than, which is what we want for this problem. Um, and then here we can see that we've replaced our first or our find if with our first less than call. And note that I didn't mention before, but the dot base here is the way of converting a reverse iterator, which I is at this point doing, due to the fact that we called is sorted until with reverse iterators into just a regular forward iterator. And there's one final optimi optimization that we can make to this algorithm. And uh, that is by basically folding our equal range, which is a binary search, into our first less than, which is also a binary search. So here we're sort of doing two log n operations when we really only need to be doing one. So we can upgrade this first less than to a first less than range, similar to the equal range, which is basically the sibling function of binary search. And that looks as follows. So the same idea as before, but basically we've added a while loop that is going to decrement our iterator i as long as the element to the left of it, if there is an element to the left of it, has the same value. And at the end, we're just returning a pair. And note that if uh, we weren't able to find a value that was less than, we're just going to return uh, two uh, past the last element iterators. So that's the L here. And then if we come down to our original function, uh, we only have a single call now to first less than range. And there's no sort of J iterator here. So we can just directly swap I and P dot first. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity for this problem, which is going to be linear, which is driven by our is sorted until function. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.